Hey everyone, thank you so much for checking out this week's sermon. We pray that it encourages and inspires you today. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can be updated with the latest and previous messages to stay encouraged throughout your week. Also, while you're watching this sermon, be sure to like this video, share it so others can be inspired, and comment down below so we can stay connected. We hope you enjoy this week's message. I was working out in the yard yesterday and a truck pulled up and backed up to the house and began to unload and unload and unload. So I think we're ready for Christmas. And if you need anything extra, just come by the house. I'm sure we probably have more than enough from the way that man was sweating when he got through unloading our stuff. We hope that you are having a great uh, season of Thanksgiving this year as we have enjoyed the presence and the Spirit of God in the last few weeks as we've been studying uh, His heart and, and what God has for us planned. Um, not only this year, but looking forward. How many of you are looking forward to 2021? We are. But this Christmas season 2020 is here, is it not? It is, it is, it's right here. Let me ask you this question today. What is your best memory of Christmas in your life? Now, some of you may only be able to remember, you may be young enough, maybe five years, maybe some of you 10 years, 15, 20 years of Christmases, maybe even more. What is the best memory of Christmas in your life? I can probably tell you it's not going to be this year. I'm probably going to tell you no matter, no matter how well your Christmas goes this year, no matter how good the turkey or whatever you provide, the tamales and Big Red, which we'll have here next week. Anybody like tamales and Big Red? That's why we live in San Antonio. I'm sure that this year will not go down as one of the best years for Christmas in your life. As I said last week, I'm sure that no one of us ever started out this year knowing or feeling that it was going to be so unpredictable, so unplanned, so unprecedented the things that we would deal with in our lives this year. But despite, and I want to leave you with this because you, we, we have to, we just have to kind of encapsulate things in the moment. We have to understand that no matter how difficult it may have been, no matter what we had to deal with or get through, God was still in the middle of everything. Whether you believe it or not, we're still working on things around here. And whether you see it, whether you feel it, whether you believe it or not, God was in everything. We're going to talk about that today. Last week we talked about how that this year, this last year, that this whole 12-month cycle was so crazy. Can we just say that? Somebody, just turn to the person next to you and say, it's been crazy. It's just been crazy. We've had some good times and then we've had some difficult times. We've had some memorable moments and then we've had some that we wish we would not have that memory of. But I still want to make you realize, though we don't understand often God's plan, it is still God's plan. We may not want to accept many times the things that we have to encounter in life, but it's still a part of God's plan. And we have to trust the purposes of God are always going to be greater and more than we can believe for in the moment. Maybe you didn't see a good time. Maybe it was difficult, but I can tell you God has more for you. So today I want to continue the story of Joseph and Mary. We began last week talking about Joseph and Mary. And I want to continue that story because there was a purpose in their lives that I am sure they did not realize or understand in the moment completely. 
but yet they were willing to, by faith, step into their lives, step into their moments, step into their future, and say yes to God's plan. How many of you want to say yes to God's plan for your life? So specifically, I want to look at really four different responses in this message today. Number one, Mary's response when she found out that she was going to be carrying a child. Secondly, Joseph's response when he found out that he was going to be a father to a a son that he did not conceive. Thirdly, God's response to the whole environment and situation. And then fourthly, our or your response today. So let's start in this story by reading Luke. I love the, the way that Luke paraphrases or writes this story out for us. Luke chapter 1, he says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, now he didn't say Mary, he said Elizabeth, so Elizabeth was a relative to Mary. So in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin meetings favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Now, if an angel comes to you, young unmarried woman, lady, and says you're about to have a child, and you know that you have not naturally done what you naturally do to do that, There are kids in the room. I want us to look back at that scripture because in verse 29 it said, Mary was confused and disturbed. Would you not, ladies, be a little bit confused and concerned? When you already know the natural process by which you naturally become, conceive a child... But now this angel in the middle of the night is telling you it's all going to change. You're going to conceive through the Holy Spirit. Number one, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, what is that? What does that mean? See, Mary's response was confused and disturbed. That's what the scripture tells us. She, She was trying to process I'm sure at a million miles an hour, just like you would be trying to process when God told you you was going to do something miraculous. But what I want you to notice is Mary is trying to filter these ideas, these thoughts through her natural human mindset. When God is saying, I'm trying trying to get you to see a heavenly concept that I'm going to bring to the earth for a miraculous birth that never will ever happen again like this. I'm sure she was saying, like many of us would say, how in the world is this going to happen? How is all this going to transpire? Well, how many of you know with God all things are possible? I mean, that's what the scripture says. See, what we have to understand is God's kingdom purpose will always surpass our earthly limitations. It's going to be impossible many times for us to understand the plan of God and the purposes of God. We just have to walk in that and reveal and allow it to be revealed many times later on in the journey. See, the world will say it's not possible for God. But the scripture says all things are possible to them that what? Believe. 
All things are possible to them that believe. So Mary had to step into something that she was unfamiliar with. A position in her life that as, as we said uh, last week, you have to understand that Mary being pregnant outside of marriage means that from that day forward, she would be chastised. She would be extradited from the community, from the city. She would be expunged or exported rather into a life of being a beggar for the rest of her life. She would not be accepted in any circles with anybody because of the shame that she would bring upon not only herself, but her family as well. So this wasn't kind of a casual environment like we have in our society today, where it's kind of like, okay, you're pregnant, so what? It meant something back then. There were ramifications to it back then. You see, we get to choose between what God says and what the world says. Mary had to choose what God was saying to her and say, you know what, I am, I'm going to suffer the shame and the guilt and, and maybe even the excommunication of what the society is going to place upon me because God is speaking to me. God is showing me something, that he has chosen my purpose, my plan, that I didn't believe in, I didn't see it coming, I didn't ask for it, but God is saying, I'm going to have favor on you, Mary. There's times in our lives when we have to choose between what God says and what the world says. We have to believe in the heart and the purpose of God more than we will think about the ramifications of what the world could and might do. When Mary chose to believe God's word, she closed the gap between the natural of her own creation and to the supernatural of who God had called her to be. Let's look at Joseph's response. Joseph had a different response than Mary. Actually, when she came to him and said, hey, Joseph, guess what? I'm pregnant. Now, guys, you've been dating this girl for a while. You've been, you proposed, she accepted. You went and bought that expensive ring. It was more than you could pay for, so you put it on payments. And she's flashing it and saying, guess what? I'm pregnant. And you're like, wait a minute. You know that natural thing you're supposed to do that we haven't done, so how does this work? What was his response? Number one, he didn't believe her. And the scripture says that that he was ready to divorce her. He, he was calling the venue and saying, cancel that. He called the cake lady and said, no more cake. I don't want flowers. He called the mariachi band and said, cancel. We're not doing that. But do you know God sometimes has a bigger plan than we have? In our natural minds, it is hard for us to conceive and understand God. Because his ways, what does the scripture tell us? His ways are always higher than our ways. His thoughts are always, always greater than our thoughts. His plan is so much bigger than what we can understand. We just have to believe it. All those who believe. Joseph's response was a little bit different. In Matthew chapter 1. He gives us that. He says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. He said, I don't understand it. I, I... I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused myself. You're talking about being confused and disturbed. I'm, I'm a little disappointed and confused. I'm not sure what, how this is, you know, but okay. It is what it is. I think we can probably all a little bit associate with Joseph 
in our lives that we've found some disappointment along our journey. Things didn't turn out the way that we had intended for them to turn out. How many of you have ever planned to do, on doing something and, and, and it didn't plan come out like you planned it, you know? And then all of a sudden you're like, what in the world happened? I, I, I thought this was all planned. And you end up being a little bit confused and disturbed over the situation. I think that we have to understand sometimes, even in our hurt, even in our, I don't want to call it a failure, even in a, a reprogramming, a replanning of life, we struggle with where God wants to take us, with what God wants to do with us. But can I tell you today that God is greater than the expectations than any of our disappointments would ever be able to amount up to. His expectations of, of who he wants us to be and where he wants to lead us and how he wants to be in our lives will always be greater than any disappointment we will ever encounter in our life. We have to know that. So if you're feeling like you've lost something, I assure you God's plan for you is always bigger than anything that you could ever lose because we serve the God of more. He is not a limited God. He is not a God that withholds blessing. He is not a God that just waits for us to, to struggle in life till we get to a point where we feel like we're going to break. And he says, well, I guess I better bless them now because they can't hold on much longer. That's not God. That's not the God that gives good gifts to those who know him. Here again in Matthew chapter 1 is... Joseph's response. Scripture says, verse 20, as he, Joseph, considered this divorce, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will continue to conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary, his wife. How many of you have ever had a dream that you thought was real? That's exactly what Joseph experienced right there because it was real. It was real to him because an angel of God appeared into his life and said, Joseph, this is a God thing. This is not a natural thing. This is not an earthly thing. This is something that God has planned in heaven, and he's bringing it into this earth by your faithfulness and obedience to the things of God. Walk in it and watch what he does. This is really where the Christmas story begins. Who could have ever conceived a story like that? I don't believe anyone could ever conceive a story where, where, where God would impregnate a, a, a mother, a, a young lady rather, before motherhood in her life who had never ever been a violated, well, I wouldn't say violated, who had never ever been through the natural process. And say to you, you know, guess what, Mary? You're going to carry the Son of God. Guess what, Mary? You thought you were going to grow up in a nice little Bethlehem neighborhood and, or Nazareth or somewhere in Judea, and you, you thought you were just going to have a, a little family with a white picket fence around the house. Guess what? No. You're going to conceive and bear the Son of God. How would you feel? What would your response be? See, I want us to realize something. Just like Mary and Joseph didn't understand God's purpose and plan, didn't understand why me. I'm sure they asked that question to themselves and maybe to others. Why me? God, why are you saying this to me? Why are you doing this with me now? What is the purpose? times we will never understand God's purpose or plan. We just have to live and walk in it because it is his plan. But I want you to understand something. 
God just doesn't plan on a daily basis. You know, uh, I'm sure some of you maybe have had those daily planners, you know, those little spiral notebook type things, and, and you have to write your daily plan out and, and your weekly plan out, and maybe even your, you know, you're one of those planners that we talked about last week. You just love to plan, and you write your whole month plan out. Guess what? God doesn't do that. You know why? Because God had your plan before the foundations of the world ever began. It is already written out. It's already there. And what he's doing, just like he's asked Mary and Joseph, he said, will you step into your plan that I've already conceived and written out for you because it is greater than what you believe for yourself right now. See, he doesn't plan on the day. He doesn't plan on the week. He said, before the beginning of time, I wrote your life. I wrote out the plan. God had centuries to prepare the birth of Jesus. Did you ever think it was kind of odd the way that happened? That, that, that it was a little bit odd that he would, he would say, Joseph, I need you to you know, get your donkey and get your nine-month pregnant now wife Any of you ladies ever rode a horse or a donkey nine months pregnant? Really? You're a woman. I'm telling you that right now. I asked them that on the first service, and everybody's like, oh, no way. I'm not sure how that felt. Maybe you can tell me, but I'm sure... It wasn't a very convenient ride. It was about 30 miles that they were traveling to get to the Bethlehem so they could be counted in the census. And here she was riding on a donkey, nine months pregnant. I'm wondering about Joseph in this moment in time too. I said, you know, a lot of times the Bible don't tell us everything about, you know, the stories. It kind of tells the story, but it doesn't tell us everything about the story. I'm thinking about Joseph. You know, if, if I'm Joseph, maybe, hey, guys, help me out. If you're Joseph and you know you're going to Bethlehem and, and you know that, that or, um, or Nazareth, I guess I should say, and you know that your wife's pregnant, aren't you like, you know, calling ahead? to the Hilton and trying to get, you know, the, the, the suite, the penthouse. Uh, you know, you're, you're trying to get the Hyatt Regis and say, hey, yeah, we're coming in, and, man, I'm carrying uh, the, the woman who is carrying the Son of God. We need the suite upon all suites, and we need everything decked out for us. Don't, wouldn't, wouldn't you think that Joseph would probably think in those terms if he's hosting the Son of God in his wife's womb? But the story tells us something different. I I kind of thought of this story about Melissa and I one time. I thought I'd do something real nice for her on Christmas, you know. And um, so I I, I kind of started planning this thing, and I I was going to take her on a surprise ski trip to Rio Dosa. And so I'd already pre-advanced, I'd called my mom and said, Mom, hey, can you watch the kids? I know there's four of them. Just, you know, nail them to the floor, whatever you have to do. (laughs) But we just want to, you know, I want to take Melissa on a ski trip. You know, a couple, two or three days, we'll be gone. We'll be back. And uh, so, you know, she graciously agreed to that. And so the night we had Christmas at at, at their house with all of our family and and, uh, said, okay, good night. About 10 o'clock, we left. Drove all the way to Rio Dosa, got there the next morning. I don't know if you know anything about skiing in Christmas week, but everybody goes skiing on Christmas week. So we normally would stay at the end of the mountain. God's a nice uh, a hotel resort kind of place there. Call them, nope, we don't have any room. I had forgot to call ahead and schedule a room. I call Motel 6, hey, please. No, we have no room. Call the Chamber of Commerce. Hey, point me in the right direction. I don't know where you're going to go. Man, don't you know it's Christmas week? Yeah, I think I do. Finally found a small little cabin that rent we rented and, and enjoyed our time. I'm sure Joseph, why wasn't he thinking ahead? I don't know. Probably like me. He's like, hey, it's a good idea. Let's do it. But you see, it had to happen this way. 
It had to happen that they were taking a journey from their town, their city, to, to, to be counted. It had to happen that they were riding on a donkey. It had to happen that it was a 30-mile journey. It had to happen. Why? Luke chapter 2, verse 10 tells us that at the same moment in time that they get there and this, this whole miraculous plan of God is outlaid, There's shepherds in a field just tending sheep. They're just doing their job. But then in Luke chapter 2, it says, Don't be, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the, he is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find him wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. You see, the manger of Lord is sent by the Almighty God, creator of everything. Why did he come in a manger? Why was he stuck in a stall where animals had ate, defecated? Anybody ever mucked stalls before? Not a, not a pleasant job. And here's Joseph trying to make the best of it as he could. See, the angel was telling them, when you find him, he's telling these guys, these shepherds, when you find him, you're going to find him wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger, that he leaves this world very low and humble. Very, did you know that the son was born amongst cattle and sheep and I'm sure it had this stink carrying the son of God into this place? The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is about to be born into this world? What does that look like? Why did he say he was the Lamb? Because in the, to the priest and sin. To make a sacrifice to God for your sin. It's to be the perfect a limp that, that, that would be saying, oh, well, he's, he's perfect. Bring them actually into their very own house and begin to feed and nurture him from their very own table. They would make a room, make a place for them in their home. And there they would, they would just begin to love and nurture on that lamb because they knew that at some point, he, when it means something, this wasn't just, oh, my pocket change, I'll give to God. This was the best that they had. You know, in our world today, we have animals that, of us, they, they, they sleep in our beds with us and, and they become very, very meaningful. We love them when they pass. We, we have ceremonies. We cry. We... After they had nurtured and fed and loved, they watched that lamb grow. They would take it one day and walk to the temple, knowing that take away. I'm not going to sacrifice you, I promise. He was bridging the Old Testament to the New. He was saying there is a lamb that is being born. This was God's response to our sin. 
No longer will you. Put, I am giving you my best. I am. Built. I can have an eternal security and salvation through the blood. Jesus, the Lamb of God. He has. He is. But if you ask God, you're the reason for the season. The perfect sacrifice for you. And no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what you're, you have to make yourself available. As you see, the scripture tells us that the blood of Jesus washes away all of our sin. I don't think anyone could have ever planned a story like this. Of a Christmas story that says, let me send a Savior into the world, be born of a virgin, be conceived by the Holy Spirit that lives without sin for 33 years, who finds himself in the very difficult moments of life hanging upon a tree, being sacrificed, and that his blood is shed so that every person, as my perfect sacrifice, may his blood cleanse me from all my unrighteousness, may it save me from the desperation of hell and the sin that so can easily destroys me. See, Mary chose to receive God's word, even in her confusion, even when she didn't. That would restore us to a rightful, righteous place in his heart, this season. Is there a better way? Is there a different path that you could go on to find that all of your sin can be forgiven? There's only one way. Only one way to salvation. It's through the perfect lamb, Jesus, who was slain. John 3.16 tells us, for God so loved the world. That he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That means eternally, forever. <laughs> only one way. Only one lamb. Only one sacrifice has been made for you. If you're in this room today... You're out there watching us online. That Jesus lives in our disappointments just like he lives in our victories. Just because we're struggling at points and times in our life, he doesn't back away. He doesn't hold himself back and say, well, I'm going to let him figure it out and then I'll step back in. He walks with us every step of the way. And I can tell you there's been times in my life where I didn't understand his plan. I couldn't find a purpose. But I just had to say yes, like Mary did, like Joseph did. I just had to say, I'm going to do it. I don't understand it. I don't know why. I'm just going to, by faith, accept. And what I can tell you today is that when I choose God's way, when I choose the kingdom way, when I say no to the earthly way, there's always been more of God there. And I had to allow God to lead me and guide me navigate my life through some very difficult and unknown, unfamiliar territory. But I can also tell you that he was right there beside me every step of the way. Some days I felt him so strong it was overpowering, overwhelming. Some days it was just like he was saying, you're not going to sense it, you're not going to understand it, but just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. 
If that's you in your life today and you're, you're not understanding, you're not feeling the presence of God, can I just encourage you to keep going? Just keep stepping out by faith. Keep walking in the midst of the struggle because God is still there. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He is not going to turn his back. He's not going to withhold himself. You may not feel it. You may not see it. You may not understand it. But I promise you, he will be there every step of the way. If he was willing to give his only begotten son, if he was willing to sacrifice him, why would he turn his back on you now? Why would he leave you in the darkness? Why would he leave you in the hurt? Why would he leave you in the pain? Why would he leave you in the struggle? He won't. He will be there every step of the way. Would you bow your heads with me? If you're in this room today, if you're online with us, maybe you can say today, Steve, I, I want, I want to live like that. I want to live with the confidence that God is with me every step of the way. But I need to accept him as my Lord and Savior. I, I need to acknowledge that he was the Lamb of God slain from the foundation. I want to give my life today to him. If that's you in this room, would you just raise your hand right where you are? If you're online, I want you to raise your hand right where you are as well. Thank you for these in this room today. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to pray and acknowledge the Lamb of God. King of kings, the Lord of lords, our soon coming king. I can't emphasize that to you today with the English words that can describe the excitement of my heart and my spirit about how close Jesus is to us coming and redeeming us. But we're going to pray for those who raise their hand here and online today. If it's okay with the person next to you, just take them by the hand. Pray for them. Pray for that hand that you're holding for that person that is close to you. Ask God in this season where Jesus is completely and totally the reason that he would become more real in their lives today. Heavenly Father, your plan and your purpose is always greater than ours. In our natural minds, we can never conceive the supernatural visions and dreams that you have for us. I pray, God, for those who have raised their hand in this room and who have raised their hands online to accept and receive that perfect Lamb of God slain from the foundation. It was part of the plan. It didn't just happen in the moment. It was part of the plan. From the beginning of the creation of the world, Jesus was to die for the sin of man. And for the millennials that it took to get to that place, he knew and he understood that he was going to someday enter to the, into this earth and become that perfect lamb and give his life so that all people could come to know him as Lord and Savior. And although he had millennials to think about it, he still willingly jumped out of heaven into this earth to redeem us. So we give our hearts, we raise our hands, and we ask, Lord, for the blood of Jesus to wash us clean and white, to forgive us of our sin, to give us a hope of our future, which comes through Jesus. And we'll give you our praise and thanks every day of our lives from this day forward for your blessing, for your protection, for your provision, in Jesus' name, and everybody says.
Well, thank you so much for watching and tuning in with us today. We hope that this service encouraged you. And if you made the decision to follow Jesus, we want to know about it so we can connect with you. Go to our app and fill out the life change card. And we want to celebrate the decision that you made because we know that Jesus and only Jesus has a life changing power to change our lives forever. So congrats on the decision that you made today. We love you guys and we're praying for you. Also, if you'd like to partner with us in giving and you want to be generous today and you want to sow your tithe, you can do that on our app by going to download it on your Apple or Google Play or Android phone. Download the LTO app and you can give through the app and website or you can also text the number 84321 and the dollar amount that you would like to give today. Thank you so much for your generosity. It is helping us as a church make an impact in our community today. We also want to stay connected with you, not just on the Sunday, but throughout the week. So be sure to follow us on all of our social platforms, such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcast to be encouraged throughout your week. We love you guys. We're praying for you. We hope you have an incredible week coming up. And we'll see you back here next Sunday for Online Church. We love you guys. Have an incredible day.